Welcome to Visions of Victory, our weekly broadcast of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Springhouse, Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us where we remember the words of the psalmist David. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So sit back and relax because the next voice you'll hear is that of our pastor, Charles W. Kwan. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to hear those old songs. Turn to somebody and say, the Lord changed me. Say it like you really know that you've been changed. Say, the Lord changed me. The Lord changed me. I'm not like I used to be. I'm not perfect, but some change has been made. I would ask you would take a moment and look in your Bible to the Gospel according to St. Luke, the 22nd chapter, verses 14 and 15. The New Living Translation reads in this manner. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. I want to preach from the servant subject, invited to the Lord's table. As you take your seat, will you simply say invited? 
to the Lord's table. Who we invite to the table to eat with us is so important. Most of us, if we're honest, would probably invite family and friends. And when the truth is told, there's some family members that will be left out. <laughs> friends who have worn out the invitation. How many of us would invite someone to the table to eat with us who did not like us? I mean, not like our cooking, just don't like us. I love to eat out. That's not a put down on my wife's cooking. I just love to eat out. So I eat at the William Penn Inn, and then I also slide down some and eat at Pumpernick's. And I watch very carefully the conversation at the tables. And most people who gather to break bread have a lot in common family members, and I eavesdrop at some of the conversations. But I'd like, again, to pose this question to you. Who do you invite to eat with you? Would you deliberately invite someone who did not like you? I see this happen at weddings. Scratch. Put them in the back. Do we have to invite them? I do it because you asked me to, but I really don't want them at the wedding. I've seen so many people hurt at the table. In fact, I have been at the table to eat, Reverend Turner, what, what I thought was my friends, and before I left, I realized they were not my friends after all. There's something special about the table. We have gotten away from the real richness of the table. I tell you something else I like, I'll let you in on a secret. I like blue blood. I like to wait till the last scene. Because at the last scene, the table is set with family members. And the grandfather normally tells a story. They can cut out the rest of the part. Just let me see the last few minutes. Rich. The conversation at the table doesn't take place like it used to because now everybody's on their cell phone texting. No intimacy at the table. I don't know how many times I have made up at the table. You get that by 11 o'clock. <laughs> at the same time, I don't know how many times I messed up at the table. You consider the fact that the Lord has invited us to come to his table. It's a privilege. It's an honor. And we take it so lightly. We practice here at Bethlehem open communion. That means anybody could come. I've been in places of worship when the table was open and I was not allowed to come. I felt bad. I knew that was their practice, but I still felt bad that I could not come to the table. And we don't come to the table because we are pure and right and holy. I've said on more than one occasion how I've seen people who have refused to take communion based on the fact that they believe in their heart that they were not fit to take communion based on something they did. But when the truth is told, none of us are fit. What makes us right to come to his table? Nothing we have done merits the invitation. (sighs) 
And there's some tables you have to be a certain pedigree to attend. But anybody can come to the Lord's table. Luke, the gospel writer, shares in this Passover meal Jesus took great delight in sharing this meal with his disciples. The Passover was a time of great joy, feasting, and fellowship for the disciples of Jesus who gathered with them in the upper room. The meal was also an occasion for redemption, liberation, and deliverance. Looking back, the disciples would come to see this meal as a monument. It was indeed an upper room experience they would not forget. Luke in his narrative says the members of the religious establishment were seeking how to plot the death of Judas and struck a deal with Jesus' enemies to betray him. The storm clouds were gathering, but Judas is invited to the table. My brothers and sisters, everybody doesn't share in the fellowship and blessings that God has given to us. It's amazing because during the vacation season, after we had a time to gather in Virginia Beach, the next two Sundays I went to worship because I believe that vacation also is a time for renewal. And the beach can't do it by itself. You need God to renew you. So I went to Mount Airy Church of God in Christ to hear Dr. Felton. And then I went to Mount Airy to Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church to hear Dr. Waller. And it was interesting because both of them preached messages that were similar, talked about competition. That we're not in competition with one another. And that when somebody else is being blessed, you should be able to rejoice in their blessings. Do I have a witness? So that the person next to you, when they're blessed, you ought to be able to say, thank God that you're blessed by God. And because God bless you, I know my blessings are on the way. We have some haters, even in the church. Here again is Judas who did not catch hold of the true meaning of the dinner, but he was invited anyhow. Dispute arose among the disciples. Which one would be the greatest in the kingdom? <laughs> Luke dramatically places this argument here in a way that shows that disciples have absolutely no understanding of the suffering of the Savior. Sometimes we miss it. I thank God for you, Deacon Dolores Parks, this morning when I got on and heard you talk about the Lord's Supper. And sometimes we come out of tradition, out of ritual, because it's the first Sunday, but we lose the significance of the meaning. If there be no resurrection, we're dead in our sins. If there be no shedding of blood, we've gotten away from the meaning of this sacred meal. We don't understand the full significance of how the master indeed would suffer and at the same time find himself so bent on doing the will of the kingdom that he did not allow anyone at the table to stop him. Betrayers, deniers, he indeed was bound for the kingdom doing the kingdom work, we cannot let anybody stop us from doing the work of the kingdom. I have in my office a picture of when I went to the Congo sitting in the governor's house. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would be sitting in the governor's house in the Congo. But at the same time, my brothers and sisters, I cannot even compare that to having the opportunity to come to the Lord's table. 
realizing that in this last just week, I had messed up. I'm here all by myself. Nobody else has had any thoughts in your mind. All my thoughts have been pure and honest and holy and right and I have just been so good. But I'm still invited to the table. And you may not know what I was thinking, but God knows. In fact, some of you upset now even said that because you wouldn't say, oh, the pastor is a dirty rascal. (laughs) He was thinking ungodly things. I would not expect him to think anything other than God. Let me tell you something else, and I have not shared this with anyone. Anyone. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, there has been this cloud of depression over me. I've not felt like this before. And I put on a good front. How are you doing? But underneath of it, there's something that's taking place that I cannot explain. Things are well financially, things are well health-wise, but something has caused me to feel kind of blue. I don't even know what it is. But the mere fact that I'm thinking this and yet God still says, Charles Kwan, you can come to this table today no matter what you're feeling. And some of us put depression in the minds of the devil, but depression is real. Life is real. And yet God still says, no matter what you have done, no matter what you're thinking, you're still invited first class. If I were inviting, Lord, and if you were inviting at your last meal, would you have a betrayer, a denier, a folk arguing about who should be in position? I don't mean your last meal, your first meal. But the master does not allow anyone to take him off of his course. He says, come because I'm about to leave this place. Jesus Christ invites us to come to his table with a free invitation that we can partake of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The bread representing his broken body the cup representing his precious blood. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We come to be renewed and strengthened at the table. At the table there's love. At the table there's peace. At the table there's joy. At the table there's strength. At the table we will find the grace and mercy that we need Anybody here this morning glad that God's invited you to come to his table? Anybody grateful that in spite of what you've done, God still allows you to come? Anybody grateful, thankful that you can come this morning just as you are? Do I have a witness in the house? Do I have a witness in the house? And none of us are free from temptation. Oh, God, that's why we cannot turn our nose at somebody else because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And your sins may not be like mine, but guess what? You have some. And sometimes we forget that. We forget that the table of the Lord is invited to those who are in need of healing, in need of strength. It's a privilege, it's an honor 
to come to the Lord's table. The mere fact that God's allowed us the ninth time to gather this morning, we ought to give him thanks. Somebody who started out in 2016 is not here today, but God has allowed us to come one more time. We ought to say thank you, God, for another opportunity that God has given to us in spite of us. I grew up in a church that uh, had communion in the evening. And if you miss three communion services, you are not a member of the church. We'd have a whole lot of less members here. <laughs> and unfortunately, some people only come on the first Sunday for communion. Not on that, but let me tell you something else. Because the word says, let an individual examine themselves, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth damnation to them soul. So that if you have something against your brother and sister, it ought to be a time now for you to ask for forgiveness. Because this may be your last time. And maybe one of the reasons why I've been dealing with this cloud of heaviness over me is because there's some people in my life I have to be able to forgive, and I'm struggling with that. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh God, my, my flesh is dealing with that. And I'm surrounded with other folks who are telling me the opposite thing of what I need to hear. Let it go, Pastor. Don't bother them. But you have to be led by the Lord. You can't go by what somebody else says. If you have offended someone, if somebody's offended you, you have to let it go because you can't come to his table. Am I the only one here that needs to have some resolve with somebody else? That's why I talk about vacations. They, they make you think. Yeah. And every time I come to the table, it's a thinking moment for me. And when I grew up in church, they would sing, this may be the last time you don't know. The invitation has been extended to me so when I come I don't want to just come out of ritual or routine but I want to come with an open heart to God that God will know my heart is right and if you're not careful you can go through this is listen to listen to me you can go through the motion as deacons and deaconess and as preachers and pastors giving the symbol you want to receive so sometimes we place ourselves at the wrong side of the table and I, I, I want to make this clear because I know what he was saying and he's not here and I appreciate him saying it but let me be clear so that nobody is misunderstanding. This is not my church. This is God's church. I need communion like you. I may be behind the table, but when the reality is told, I should be on my knees at the table because I know how good God's been to me. How his grace and mercy saved me. So we all have to be careful. That we don't allow ourselves to move to the front of the table. Like the disciples were arguing about who's first. And if you can't shout at the table. I don't know where you can shout. Right. 
If you can't praise God at the table, I don't know where you can shout. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let me close like this. Everybody's asking my wife, are we going to have Thanksgiving dinner again? Because she makes dinner for about 35 or 40 people. I'm hoping she does it again. But, <laughs> but everybody who's there says, thank you. That's the least they can do. She says, I don't want you to bring any dishes. I just want to come and have a good meal. And if somebody doesn't say thank you, that says they don't appreciate what they've done. So if the Lord has invited you to come to his table, you at least could be able to say thank you. I mean, you don't have to bring anything, just bring yourself. Anybody want to say thank you, God, this morning for allowing me the opportunity to come to your table? Anybody want to say thank you, God, for giving me mercy and grace and strength to come to your table? I don't deserve to be invited, but you invited me. You invited me. You invited me. Others might think I'm not good enough to come, but you invited me. Others may just tie me a seat, but you invited me. Oh, God. And you invited me because sometimes I am a betrayer myself. I carry mixed emotions myself. I'm not always faithful myself, but you still invited me. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, today. Thank you, Lord. Anybody here want to give God praise just for the invitation? Sam, put your feet and give God thanks for the invitation. He's invited you. He's invited you special. Now turn to somebody and say, I have been invited to the table. Now, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> let, me, let me take that one step further. If you were invited to the president's house, you would not say, I'm invited to the president's house. You would say, President Barack Obama invited me to dine with him. Amen. <laughs> let me hear you say, the Lord himself has invited me. We hope you've been inspired and encouraged by today's message. You're invited to visit us at Bethlehem Baptist, a warm multicultural church with two Sunday services, 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. We're located in Springhouse, Pennsylvania at Penland Pike and Dager Road, only 15 minutes from Philadelphia. We hope to see you soon. God bless you, and remember, love God, serve people.